Greetings everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your host Captain Rye and today we'll be looking at my Get Good series, How to Colorado. Yes, that's right, the mighty Colorado, Tier 7 US Battleship. A ship that, like the Pepsi Cola, everybody seems to hate. What is it with US Tier 7s that nobody really likes? Well, the Colorado has its faults. This is absolutely true. Tier 7, she is the slowest ship in the game, especially with her stock engine. You only get about 18.9 nautical miles per hour. And even fully upgraded, you're only getting 21. So, you're going to be the slow boat to nowhere. But, just like the New Mexico before her, you have amazingly thick Citadel armor. And it's imperative that you know how to use that armor to its best effectiveness. Which, just like the New Mexico before her, is when you're angled against your enemy. And you can angle really, really well in the Colorado. The gun arcs on this ship are just as good, if not a little bit better, than the New Mexico. And your rudder shift time is equally as good. So, as the battle gets going here, this is the Trident map. It's domination match mode, which I prefer over the epicenter mode, just because, well, <laughs> it's epicenter. Now, the captain skills that I have on this ship, I do not yet have a 15-point captain. But my 15th point on this captain will be manual secondaries. And the reason for that is that the concealment on this ship isn't as good as the New Mexico, so even if you went with a concealment build, you're still talking about a 13 or 14 kilometer detectability range. And since the best recommended firing range is 15 kilometers or less, you're still talking about the probability of being spotted before you want to open fire. The secondary guns on this ship, however, are good. There are a lot of them, and they have a 6 kilometer range which you don't have in the New Mexico, which is about a 4.7 or 5 kilometer range. So you get that extra kilometer. So with the captain skills, I recommend basics of firing training, expert marksman for an improved turret rotation. And the turret rotation on the Colorado is better than the preceding ships in the line. So you do have a little bit quicker turret movement. You can get your guns on target a little bit quicker, and with the better arcs, means you don't have to turn your ship as much to do it. I recommend getting Superintendent. For that extra heal, make that five heals and extra scout fighter. Although I do have the spotter on this in this particular replay, I recommend the scout fighter because these guns at ranges of 23 kilometers are just not that good. And if you pull the camera back between shots instead of tunnel visioning, you should have no problem seeing and dodging torpedoes. You might take a torpedo or two, and as long as you don't take the torpedo to the bow, you should be fine. You just have to remember to pull that camera back. And the reload on this ship is actually quicker than all the preceding ones with a 29 second reload. Now, this hipper, he's trying to disappear behind that island. I've got decent gun arcs, get my guns fired right before he disappears behind that island, and I managed to hit him for a double citadel and get a first blood. But if you look at the chat log there and you'll see down above the minimap, I'm not the only one on my team who just got a first blood. That's right, my division mate, Reimu, he just got a first blood at the same time. That is absolutely awesome. Angling my ship away from the Colorado and the New Mexico that are back there. Tried to keep my guns on that Mogami before he disappeared behind the island, but not quite enough. At the Tier 4 skill, I recommend Advanced Firing Training. Get those secondary and anti-aircraft range boosts, and the Colorado is really good for anti-aircraft. In fact, there for a time, it used to be the best anti-aircraft platform that wasn't a cruiser. The turning radius on this ship is fantastic. The rudder shift time is great, just like the preceding ships in the line. So you're going to want to use that by sailing in a zigzag pattern. Because you're a slow ship, don't stop moving. You know, you know, basically stay max or three quarters throttle whenever possible. And keep your guns pointed on the same side of your ship. There are 
you know, times when you're going to want to turn your turrets around. But in this case, here in the battle, the targets that I would have turned my turrets around to face as I start heading back the other direction, they've all gone behind an island or they're angled. So I'm going to keep my guns on the same side and I'm going to take shots at all of the targets that are out at the opposite end. That Atlanta in the distance there, he's looking like a juicy target. He is backing up. I do manage to hit him for an overpenetration, but fail to connect with any meaningful damage. And you're going to find that when you're shooting at targets that are out at these kinds of ranges. You're just not going to be able to secure those citadels, but the dispersion is actually pretty good. I recommend the artillery plotting room module because when you do aim, the dispersion on your guns is fantastic and you can land those guaranteed hits and kills like I just did on that Atlanta. It's only when your shots are aimed poorly that they disperse all over the place. I also recommend the rudder shift uh, damage control Mark 1 and main armament Mark 1 as well to give you uh, the best just general build that you can. Now I'm pushing up towards this cap point. It's already been capped however there are enemies back over there and since I'm sailing in this zigzag pattern anyway and again because I'm so slow it doesn't really matter that I keep changing directions or even turn around and sail away I'm not increasing the range very quickly, and I'm doing what really needs to be done, which is keep this ship angled. You can see, as I've been taking shots in from that New Mexico and that Colorado, most of their shots are just bouncing off of my side or hitting my turrets. Another prime example, taking very minimal damage in comparison to the damage that I'm dealing back out. I'm taking maybe two or 3,000 damage, and I'm dealing out upwards of 10k. There is a Mogami that is sitting behind that island. He is popping up every now and again as our aircraft carrier sends planes over or as a scout fighter gets close to him. And this is why I recommend that scout fighter as opposed to the spotter. You're going to need and use that scout fighter a lot more, especially when coming around islands, than you are going with the spotter. The spotter just does not have that time in the air like the fighter does. Now I'm taking the opportunity to turn my turrets around. I've got an island between me and the nearest target. The two battleships that I'm angled against, they're disappearing behind an island. And as I expect, again, to turn the other direction to head towards B eventually, all of the targets I'm going to likely be shooting at are going to be on my starboard side as opposed to my port side. I could have kept my guns on the port side and I could have just continued going off to the port side. Keeping with the idea of vigilance, I knew that that Mogami was back behind that island and that there would probably be torpedoes in the water. So I've turned my ship away and I'm giving that island a nice wide berth. And I'm keeping myself angled against that Mogami. Well, I don't necessarily expect that Mogami to be able to kill me with armor piercing. It's possible he could do quite a bit of damage. I get two shots off there and I manage to finish him off. Because I'm angled and because I pull the gun camera back again and can take a look at the situation around me, I can easily torpedo beats. Still, take one. It was right there on my torpedo bulge, so no flooding, which is fortunate for me. And kept myself from taking all four of them, which probably would have killed me. I am now broadside on to the New Mexico and the Colorado in the distance there, but they're not actually paying attention to me. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my guns lined up once again, fire out, angle a little bit while keeping all my guns pointed there. Hit that Colorado and nearly kill him, leave it on. Come on, RN Jesus, why do you do this to me? 344 HP, really just, I, I don't even know. As I turn back away, I'm going to continue to push towards B, and my team has been having a very difficult time pushing B. Again, as a slow boat, it's a slow boat to nowhere, really. So I'm not going to stop moving. If I had, if I had sat back, I would be very ineffectual against things like this Farragut who's popped up, who's actually been doing a fantastic job defending the B cat point. 
I get a turret knocked out there, it doesn't matter, three shots, manage to finish him off. Those overpenetrations do a ridiculous amount of damage. Looking at the situation once again, most of the targets I'm going to be shooting at are going to be on this back side of the map where I am, so I'm going to want to continue to sail that direction, which means turning back so that all of my guns are on the port side. In the process, I lose 50% of my firepower as this New Mexico comes around the corner, and because I lose 50% of my firepower, I'm not able to secure the kill on him. You'll notice, I'm at 4 kills and I am looking for that Kraken Unleashed. I am keeping my ship angled though against that Bismarck, and I know that the New Mexico is somewhere down by those islands and that landmass. You will notice that on the minimap, there is a Fuso, a battleship who has popped up. That battleship is AFK. I don't know if he just has loaded in, I don't know if he crashed upon loading in, but his guns are completely centerline and he's uh, not actually a threat to anybody. So we'll farm some damage on him later. Tried to get shots off of that Turpitz or that Bismarck in the distance there, but he's a fast bugger. So I'm not quite able to hit him. Give him a little more lead when my rear turrets finally get into position. And those shots look fantastic. The dispersion on the Colorado is actually really, really good. Those shots hit for a nice whopping 7,000 damage and my forward guns fired off those shots, and they managed to kill him. There is my Kraken Unleashed. Looking at the situation, I've got a Pensacola, an AFK Fuso, and a New Mexico. That Pensacola off in the distance, he's running away. So I'm contemplating whether I want to shoot at the uh, Fuso or this New Mexico. Well, there's no contemplation here. That New Mexico's guns are still in the game, and he is using them. So causing damage to him probably a priority over farming damage on somebody who's AFK. But again, I'm not sailing in straight lines, I'm keeping my ship turning, I'm keeping myself angled against those threats, because I don't want to take damage. Taking damage is bad. It always is, it always will be. My secondaries open up on him, because he's within that 6 kilometers, and this is where brawling can really come down to a good thing in this ship, you have those six kilometer secondaries. And they do decent when they start hitting. Again, I don't have manual secondaries yet, so all of these secondary hits I'm getting, this is just with standard secondary battery fire. This isn't with a uh, focused down like you would expect with manual secondaries. I decide I'm gonna go ahead and try and secure the kill on this Fuso, but as my guns get reloaded, not quite in time to finish him off, and the New Mexico is dead as well. That Pensacola is all that's left, the aircraft carrier is hiding behind an island, and we've got all three caps, so we're going to win on points here very, very shortly. Once again, to reiterate, you've got to pull that camera back between shots, and just kind of take an assessment, not just on your minimap, but just in general, where your team is, who is where, and what your spatial relationship with your ship is to them. That battle was a victory. There we have it, 107,000 damage done. First Blood and Kraken Unleashed. I hope that this how-to Colorado helps you at least improve your gameplay and uh, tolerate the ship a little bit better than outright hating it, because personally, I like this ship, and I think it's a good ship, and I think she just gets a lot of hate she doesn't deserve. They're top of the team for XP earned at 1900 base XP. Lots of ships damaged. Keeping the ship angled, keeping those turrets pointed on the same side as long as possible to shoot as many possible targets, and just taking assessments. Shooting targets that are within 15 kilometers before targets further away. That's how it's got to be done. That's it for today's video. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to like and follow me on Facebook for semi-regular updates throughout the week, please feel free to do so. And if you'd like to support my channel, feel free to do so by visiting my Patreon. You can find the links for both of those in the description down below. This is Captain Rye, signing off.